All right, what's going on, everybody? This is Toby with O Line Security, and we are back with another machine from HTB Hack the Box. This one is called Poison. It's a pretty cool box. We get to play around with some port forwarding, do some exploitation, do some more enumeration on some web services like PHP, and ultimately, we'll get the flags that we're looking for. Hey, you all, if you've been liking these series on some OSCP like boxes, please do me a favor and smash the like button, hit the subscribe button so you can stay in tune with what we have coming in the future. A lot of good gems, a lot of good things for you all to use in your career and just in your everyday InfoSec lives. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. We have a lot of these scans already done. First thing we would have done on this machine is run a few Nmap scans, right? Let's go ahead and look at our version scan, right? Just so you can see, we do have a few scans, sorry that we ran over here. We did a full scan, a ping scan, top UDP version scan, right? OS scan, bone scan, a bunch of different things here. Let's look at this version scan. We can see that we have port 22 open and port 80 open. All right, there's an SSH service running on 22 and an HTTP port with PHP on port 80. Let's go ahead and check that out. Boom. All right, temporary website to test local.php scripts. Sites to be tested, these PHP scripts. If you start putting them in here one by one, you're gonna get different information. If we put this list.php, we're gonna get, well, this list files.php. We're gonna get different files. I'm gonna duplicate this, take this back. So when we hit listfiles.php, we're gonna get different files that we can also list, that we can also enter into this field here, right? You see, if you right click and hit view page source, it makes this look a lot neater. But you can see the browse.php, index.php, info, ini, list files, PHP info. The other one, the only one we do not see on this home page right here is this password backup.txt and we don't see this one either but that's a hidden function right here okay but this password backup.txt we can go through that too right if we just paste that into here you get this this password is secure it's encoded at least 13 times what could go wrong really well, a lot could go wrong, right? Pat encoding your data doesn't necessarily protect it. It just obscures the data. It makes it look more confusing. Okay, with sensitive data, if you really want to secure it or secure it in a better way, you would probably encrypt it. All right, so once again, right click this page. Uh, it's not working, that's not working. All right, so let's do this. I'm just going to paste it into here and boom. All right, because I want to see, I'd rather see it wrapped up. We're not going to decode this now. We'll decode it later. But once you do, it will give you the password to a user on this box. All right, but we'll look at that later. Let's go back through these files. PHP, php info dot PHP, if we type that in, I'm just going to paste it over here. And we, I don't need the source. So we're just going to look at it normally. Okay. Now this is just going to give us information about this PHP, about the PHP service and the server itself that's running here. Right. And one thing about PHP that we are familiar with, especially if you've been following these these machines we've been hacking. One thing that we are familiar with is LFI attacks, local file inclusion. Right, they're PHP servers that are that are vulnerable to local file inclusion attacks, and they allow you to upload files to the system so that it can be stored locally to that system. Right now, if we take it a bit further from a malicious perspective. We could upload a reverse shell onto that system 
and have it stored locally on that system and execute it from a URL, right? But the system that we're attacking has to be vulnerable to one, local file inclusion attacks in order to do it that way we just mentioned. And it has to be vulnerable to two file uploads, right? So we can test if this is vulnerable to local file inclusion attacks, right? There's this file parameter right here, right? If we change this instead of list files, because that's a script that lives on the box, list files.php, that's a script that lives there. And this file parameter is fetching that script. If we change this to something else that lives on the box and it's vulnerable to LFI, we should get this back, right? We should get something back and we do. Let's make it look pretty. And we do, we get this Etsy password file, right? Now we can see this user Cherix is on here. They have shell access to the box and root has shell access to the box too. Okay, so we do, this box is vulnerable to local file inclusion, right? This is something you just have to fuzz around with, okay? You just have to play around with it sometimes to see if it's vulnerable or not. Now, it's not vulnerable to remote code. Uh, RFI attacks, remote file inclusion, I've already tried it. Maybe it is and I just messed it up. If it is, leave a comment in the section below and teach me something new, please. Thank you. Now, to check if we can upload files here, we just have to look at this page, right? All I did was control find file uploads and it is turned on on this box. So we are able to upload files on here. We can open up Burp Suite right now, capture this request, convert it to a post request and start uploading files. But when I tried to do it, when I tried to upload uh, some PHP files, I couldn't find where those files were. And that's where I had stopped at. So I did a little bit of Google Kung Fu and I learned that there's already a script that there's already a script that's doing this for us. It's called payload of all things. Well, <laughs> the script isn't called payload of all, of all things. The script is under this payload, all the things directory on GitHub. I'll post the description. I'll post it in the description. And then it's under this folder, file inclusion. And it's this script right here, this PHP info LFI.py. Okay, feel free to read some more about this Git repo over here. But what this script is gonna do, it's gonna take a payload of our choice. This script right here is gonna take a payload of our choice, uh, this payload. We're gonna switch this, okay? Well, I already switched it, but I'll show you how to switch it. But it's gonna take our payload from here to here, actually. This line, we're gonna change this entire line right here with our payload, but it's gonna take our payload and upload it to this server. Right, and it's gonna it's gonna try and find where it uploaded it to, and then it's going to execute it in that location. All right, so this is gonna do the LFI plus file upload plus executing it for us. All right, this entire script right here. So there are a few things we're gonna have to change though. I'm gonna show you here first because it's easier if I show you here because I've already done it. You want to remove this line. Right, only what I have highlighted right here. Well, no, 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 sorry. You're gonna remove this. Leave, the, you're gonna remove everything right here. Leave this forward slash return, right? Leave that there. But you're gonna remove this payload and put your own. Okay, and the, I'll show you which payload that we use. That's one thing we're gonna change. The next thing we're gonna change is this is gonna stay the same because that's the request. Uh, this is gonna change. The LFI request is gonna change. We're gonna change this to this. This is what we're gonna change it to. Oops, I didn't mean to cut that. 
we're going to change it to browse.php question mark file equals and then we're going to remove this and only leave one percent s right this percent and s that's it so this is going to be browse.php question mark file equals okay and then the next two things we're going to change are this this temp name instead of equals greater than we're going to put equals i'm going to do it right here we're going to put equals in gt okay we're going to put this there instead of this we're going to put this and you have to do that twice here it's this one and this one right here there you have to change it in two places so it's going to be equals and gt all right so let's go ahead and look at the script now so our payload you can get your payload from user share this directory php php that reverse show dot php this is what we're using right here all right this is our payload you can literally copy all of this and then paste it in right here okay you paste it in right there but you have to download that script first ours is called i named it phpinfo.py You can see our payload starts from right here. You have the PHP, you see the port or the IP port, right? Now everything else I told you to change. Uh, let's see, where is it? Okay, the request we didn't change. The LFI request, your LFI request should look like this, right? browse.php question mark file equals percent s okay uh and then temp name i don't know why it's highlighting things for me temp name equals and gt both of them equals and gt okay those are what you have to change Got that change. Now we're gonna run it. This script is run is using Python 2. So I'm gonna activate my Python 2 environment. Whoops. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Alright, now to run the script, we're gonna call the script, give the IP the port number that the service is running on, the PHP service, and the number of threads we want to spawn this process. Okay, so once again, this script, I'm gonna run it while it's doing, while we're talking because this took some time the first time I did it. Now this script is going to take our payload. Oh no, I can't do that. We need our port open. Ah, oh, just in time, wow, that was quick, okay. So you should have this listener open before you run that script, right? Have a port open on 888 or whatever port you're using in your payload. But what this script is doing, you all, it's taking our payload, the first show that we paste it into, into it, it's taking that payload and uploading it to this system on this using this port. And it's trying to execute that payload. Okay, it's trying to execute it and it takes it a while because it has to find it, right? It, it's a bunch of stuff going on in the background, but it found it, it and we have a shell down here. I'm gonna close this, but now we have a shell here. Okay, who are we? Probably www. Okay, we're on the box now. At this point, it's time to do some it's time to do some privilege escalation, right? See what's going on on the box. Let's see what users we have. 
We have Cherix. And one more thing before we go any further, let's decrypt this password or decode it. Right, you can go online and use the online decoders. You'd have to use it seven, 13 times. Because remember, this said, it worked that time. It said this password is secure. It's encoded at least 13 times. So you have to decode it 13 times. This is base 64. So you can do it that way, or you could just use the base 64 command 13 times over here. Uh, So we could do cat pwd base64-d, base64-d. You can just do that 13 times. And then you have the user, I mean the password, right? This was this password, right? And obviously this password probably belongs to this user. So let's try that. All right, it probably belongs to that user. So SSH Cherix. We'll see if that works. If it works, yay. Uh, this is gonna take a while. Well, this is taking a while. Let's see, I'll give it a, another second. All right, cool. Give it a few more seconds. Paste that password into there, boom. Now we're on this box. If I list out some stuff, you can see the user.txt files here. That's your first flag. And then there's this thing called secret.zip. So I'm gonna close that out. Secret.zip, we can SCP this over. Okay, SCP, that's secure copy. It allows us to copy files using SSH. We would just SCP Cherix at the IP that Cherix is on, then the name of the file. All right, you could use the full, full, full directory, okay? Or you could just do it like this. And then the dot right here at the end, don't forget that, that's gonna copy it over to your current working directory that you're inside of. Ours is downloads, poison. I have a directory that we're working out of called poison. Okay, I'm not gonna run this again. Well, I'll run it again, it's not gonna hurt. Okay, now this copy is the secret.zip file over to our box. Now this is it right here. We just need to unzip it. So we can do that with the unzip command. Before we do that, I'm gonna copy this password back. And I'm gonna do unzip secret.zip. It's gonna ask for a password. The only one that we have right now is this one. It's asking me if I wanna replace it. I'm just gonna say yes. Yours should just cop extract it. Now we have this secret.zip. If we try to open this up, looks like some weird characters. We'll come back to that. All right. Now we have that secret.zip file that we have. We don't know where we're gonna use it for yet. We can do some, some enumeration in order to escalate our privileges. First thing, or a couple of things we can do. We can look at the running processes. Let's see what processes are running on this box. Let's actually simplify this to just root. And I'm gonna open this up in a new screen. Let's put this down. All right, so root, what is root running? What is root running? Boom, bada bing, bada boom. Root is running VNC. VNC can be used to access remote systems. It's similar to RDP remote desktop for Windows. VNC is typically used on Linux systems. And there's a VNC session that's established right now running as root. We just have to connect to it. Okay, we just have to connect to the service. And in order to connect to the service, we need to figure out what port it's running on. So let's run netstat a uh, A won't work on this box. I don't think so. Oh yeah, it will, yeah it will. Let's run this to see what port VNC is running on, right? Because VNC is gonna have a port running for to accept sessions. 
just like RDP is gonna have a port running to accept sessions and RDP's port is typically 3389. BNC, I think it's about, it's in the 5,000, like 5090, 5080. Those are the default ports, all right? Obviously you can change them, but people tend to stick to default, some default ports, not all of them. All right, so we're getting some things back from Netstat right now. Remember all we're waiting for, or the what we're looking for is a port that VNC is using. Why? Because VNC is running as root right now. Okay, and if we can figure out what port VNC is running on, we can forward that port to our local machine. Okay, we can use SSH to forward the port VNC is running on to our local machine and then run and then connect to that VNC service from our local machine. Okay, and we're going to see that in a second, just after we figure out what port VNC is running on. This shouldn't take that long. Okay, there we go. All right, and it is running on 5901 in 5801 okay so we can go ahead and forward these ports over let me go over here and close this up i don't want too many screens running so i'm going to use proxy chain you probably don't need to use this but i'm going to use this port that i have set in proxy chain um you'll see why let me just do it so ssh d uh i have it here already all right so let's just so the reason i was going to just set this dynamic port was just in case this doesn't work right so let's just do it without the dynamic port let's see all right so 5901 we want to forward this port on that system over to us on 5901 and I'm not going to do 5801 well let's just do it just in case 5801 okay so we're going to forward these local ports 5901 I mean that the remote port 5901 to our local port on 5901 and then this remote port 5801 to our local port on 5801. All right, I think that's how it goes. SSH-L, okay. So now we have to do Cherix at 10.10.10.84. .10 .10 SSH cannot resolve name. Okay, so what do we? Oh, whoops, I forgot. Got this dash L. All okay, so let me grab this password again. Okay, now it's asking for the password. Gave it the password. Now we can check. If this worked by doing nets that Yep, so my net stat is showing that we have port 5901 open on our box and we have port 5801 open on our box. All right, so we just forwarded those local ports to our machine. Okay, the, the dash D was just something extra, right? If we did dash D without the dash L's, that could have worked too, right? I won't go into it. <laughs> let's let's get right to it. So now let's try to connect to this BNC server. Um, I'll show you why we need the password in a second. If you try to connect to this, you, we have a tool called BNC Viewer that's locally installed on Kali. It's gonna, if you try to connect to this over port 5901, it's gonna ask for a password. All right, if you try to use the password we just got, from decoding that file, it's authentication failed. Now you're stuck, okay? What do we do next? What do we have? Well, we had that secret file. 
And if you look at VNC, you can VNC viewer. Oops. If you look at the man page, you'll see there's an option to pass a password and you can add actually not the man page, but the help page. You can see there's an option to pass a password as a file, right? So maybe it's that VNC this secret file All right this is the option right here password this is the secret file we want our local machine over port 5901 so we're gonna go ahead and run that now when I first did this box this took forever to launch up okay forever I thought something was wrong with my system if it takes a while for you nothing is wrong with your system just try it again just try it again the next day All right but this is it y'all we are now root. You can go ahead and CD over the root. Oh no, it's right there. The root.txt file. Bada bing, bada boom. Pretty cool box. Pretty fun. Port forwarding is cool when it works. Haha. <laughs> now, takeaways from this some things that we do want to suggest to prevent our attack methods. I think the first thing we want to suggest is. Locking this web page now, right? If you're gonna have local scripts be running, right, allowing people to run different scripts from an input field over port 80, uh, this should be locked down, right? Some type of access control, right? That, which would probably bump this up to 443. Okay, we want to lock this down. Maybe implement some type of certificates, uh, user, some type of user access control to limit access to this, or just remove it. Right, remove it and force people to use it. Use run these test these scripts locally. Okay, that's one two. Uh, kind of goes in with what we just said with that password file. We want to be able to. This shouldn't be accessible. In addition, decoding it is not securing your passwords. Right, you want to encrypt, not encode. Right, encoding it is not securing your passwords. You want to encrypt, not encode. Okay, local file inclusion, we need to update this PHP server, right? Or the service that PHP is using to something that's not vulnerable to LFI. And disable file uploads. Yeah, I think that was it for the most part. Oh, the VNC service that's running, right? Root shouldn't really be running any, this service right here, right? You probably don't want this running as root. This should be running under a service account that has least privileges all right just food for thought and that's it y'all that is it there is a write-up on this box I, I highly recommend that you read the write-up by going to some of these these concepts a little bit more into detail other than that i hope you enjoyed this please do me a favor and smash the like button leave a comment and i'm looking forward to meeting you all on the next session have a good one